Hey everyone, Paul here, and I want to walk through the process that I use to track my net worth. And I think it's really important to keep track of what your net worth is over time if you actually want to become more financially successful because it helps you understand how it's trending over time if you're hitting your goals. And I feel like it just keeps you motivated, keeps me motivated to see that increasing. And if there's ever a point where it's kind of stagnating, I want to be able to figure out how I can kind of course, course correct and get back on track to reaching my financial goals. And you know, I know that there's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing this. There's applications out there. I was using Mint for a while, but ultimately tracking this in Excel, just kind of using an old school manual method was something that, you know, uh, was the easiest for me and that was, you know, kind of the most exciting for me. So I want to actually, again, walk through the file that I'm using. I'm also going to go ahead and actually post this exact file into my Facebook group. That's just going to be an easy way for me to be able to upload a file and share it with you guys. I'm going to include the link to that Facebook group. Uh, in the description for this video. So if that's something that you're interested in using, feel free to go over there, uh, you know, invite yourself or, you know, to the Facebook group uh, or join the Facebook group. And I will, of course, go ahead and approve that. You can get access to the file. And any questions that you have uh, about the file, you can go ahead and send me a message uh, from within the group and I can get back to you from there. So with that being said, I want to walk through what I use, what the results have been for my own personal finances so I can kind of show you uh, you know, how that's been trending since I've been tracking this. So let's jump over into the uh, spreadsheet. Okay, so here is the most recent update. This is where my finances sit as of April 10th. Um, so again, I've got this laid out, you know, for what my in, uh, investment accounts are for Schwab. I've got a little over $45,000 in there. And even for that, some of that's cash, some of that's stock. Uh, this shows what I have in my checking account. Uh, you know, for Chase, for Bank of America, it's a little smaller uh, than what I have in Chase there. This is physical cash that I have, you know, so, you know, the dollar bills, the hundred dollar bills, all those things, a little over a thousand. Uh, and I've right now got a little bit in my Venmo account that I just haven't moved yet. Now, I'm also, I've got some uh, entries down here for my rent asset. Uh, I'll explain that as well as my accrued pay. Now, you know, for the rent asset to kind of smooth this out, um, you know, the kind of the proper accounting way to do this is not to say that your rent hits you all at, you know, just one point in time, but it's kind of the understanding that, you know, when you pay rent at the beginning of the month, that you essentially have a daily amount that gets subtracted from a rent asset as you move through that month. And same thing with your pay. So for me, I got paid on Friday. Um, you know, but that being said, this is something where I would accrue my pay, uh, you know, by looking at what my, what my two week paycheck is, uh, and then dividing that on a per day amount and then understanding how many business days I'm actually moving through, uh, you know, through time here. So currently there's nothing accrued, but now starting Monday, I'm going to accrue one tenth of my two week paycheck once the day is complete. So again, by accruing for my pay on a daily basis, accruing for rent on a daily basis, it just kind of helps to smooth out those items a little bit. And it gives me a little bit more, uh, a closer view of, of reality for how my net worth is changing over time. Um, you know, because again, those are big items that kind of hit in lump sums. So again, just wanting to smooth that out a little bit. I've also got here what I have for my credit card accounts. Um, so I've got a lot of different accounts or credit card accounts here, actually. And if anything, I'm actually, this dollar forty six is not showing that I actually owe a dollar forty six. I've got a credit with this, so when I made my credit card payment, I actually also redeemed some rewards. So it's not that I just don't have any credit card debt. The credit card company actually owes me a dollar forty six. Okay, so um, that's that particular situation. My student loan. This has been on pause as it has been for uh, you know a lot of Americans out there where I haven't been accruing interest on this. I uh, haven't had to make a payment for this. Uh, and I don't believe actually I'm going to have to make a payment on this until September or October uh, of 2021 here. So this is not something that I'm going to rush to pay off. Uh, you know, I think, geez, even even with potential, uh, you know, political conversations out there, um, you know, the, the idea that this could potentially be forgiven for amounts under 10000 coupled with the fact that I'm not paying interest, uh, just no real strong incentive to get that knocked out. But no car payment anymore. Uh, just recently had that paid off. Um, and that was another low interest loan that, you know, I was not for a while in a rush to kind of get paid off. But that's kind of what this looks like. I've got some graphs here just kind of to help illustrate, uh, you know, some of these things. But, you know, the real value for this, again, is kind of updating this over time. And what that allows me to do is, you know, trend that out. So I can say, okay, 
this is the financial situation as of June 2020. Okay, I can take a look at how much cash I had, and I'm kind of counting cash and stock as, as one and the same because you know stock can be sold, uh, you know, you know, whatever you really want to. So pretty liquid asset there. And then the next thing is, is I say, okay, what am I worth after taking into account credit card debt? Uh, what am I worth after my student loan? Um, and then coming down here, I'm you know getting down to what my total net worth is. Um, and this is after, actually after taking into account my car loan. So this gets me down to where I was about you know had a net worth of about thirty thousand dollars in June. Okay, and then if we kind of step through that whole thing, um, you know we end up arriving with a total net worth of about sixty two thousand. So you know I was able to you know more than double my net worth um, in that time frame. Okay, uh, we can also take a look at this by trends by month. So again, by the fact that I have all this data that I was able to kind of save over time, having this information allows me to say, okay, I'm gonna consolidate that on a monthly basis. And I can say that, you know, hey, you know, obviously from the, you know, June, it was around 30,000, but by the end of July, my net worth was about 33,000, okay? And then I can kind of walk through each month where I ended the month at. And then I can see what that monthly change was. Okay, so on average for this time frame, it was close to about 3,600 that I was increasing by. Um, you know, that being said, you know, there were some months that, you know, were very positive. I did actually have a couple months in here where I was negative, and these were really driven by some you know, some trips that I had taken during those time frames. But the biggest single month that I had where my net worth increased was actually in November. And a big reason for that was, you know, I went all in with stocks, you know, when there was a lot of uncertainty with the election, that was something where I was very comfortable taking on risk. I thought that there was a lot of potential upside during that time frame. There was a lot of investors sitting on the sidelines, but I was able to take full advantage and increase my net worth, you know, from obviously other sources included in there, but one of the biggest by far driving forces from that big jump. Uh, from October to November was my willingness to kind of have additional risk uh, in the stock market during that time. So when we look at this, how would I go about actually updating this? What would that look like? Because again, this is something I'm going to have in my Facebook group. I'm going to share this particular file. So if you wanted to go about kind of updating this for you, um, all you would have to do is say, okay, like you, let's say you wanted to have this updated for tomorrow. I would drag this down. So I have a shortcut where if you hold down control, you click the tab, you left click and hold this, you drag it over, it's going to allow you to just copy that tab easily. Okay, that's a good shortcut for that. I'm gonna rename this 4.11.21. Now over here, all I have to do is copy this column. So I'm gonna control C for this these highlighted cells copy this, change the header at the top from 4.10 to 4.11, and then this is going to automatically update. So now if I come over here to 4.11, let's say that the market crashes and I lose all of my stock, goes to zero, this tab now over here is automatically gonna update and say, hey, you know, it's gonna reflect the fact that my, my stock account money's gone away, my net worth has taken a dramatic hit. Hopefully that never happens, but it kind of shows you how you'd be able to use this. So. I was able to accomplish this by using indirect formulas. And so the indirect formulas are basically saying, grab the tab that is called 4.1121. And it wouldn't matter what the tab was called as long as the header at the top matches that tab. So you, you, mean, you could have called it, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, whatever you want to call it. You know, you want to call it Paul's tab. You write that exact amount up here or that exact thing up there. It would work. But for me, I just wanted to kind of keep a date convention. So I'm just using the four... 11.21 to signify that that's the date and again so that just allows me to quickly grab all these back information by using these formulas in here um, yeah so that would be the matter of how I go about doing this and I'll also let you know that you know when I update this you know so grabbing the bank account information from here logging into my Chase Bank um, Chase Bank is gonna give me then this amount it's also gonna give me a couple of the credit cards that I have uh, you know, I've got uh, the Southwest and the Sapphire with Chase, um, you know, logging into my, the brokerage account, logging into Bank of America, of course, just understanding if there's any changes to my physical cash. I mean, I would say the whole process of updating this, you know, takes no more than two minutes a day. 
And again, the upside and the benefit is being able to go back and being able to say, you know, kind of see how proud of yourself that you can be for kind of making some of these changes, you know, because to me, it's not about saying that, hey, you know, having a net worth of $62,000 is a lot. It's more so to say, this is what it was last year in July, and I've kind of made this much progress so far. And that motivates me to continue on the path, to continue to say, hey, if I keep doing what I'm doing, you know, keep having success in the stock market, keep making, you know, uh, you know, financially smart decisions, uh, you know, with how I allocate my spending, all of those things, you know, I'm optimistic about, you know, what the future is going to look like and, you know, how, how I can add another, you know, $20,000, $30,000 of net worth to this within the next year. So again, keeps me motivated. I think that I, I enjoy this process. It's definitely something that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I've put the time into this. If you guys have any questions about, you know, updating this file, you know, changing it to your needs, uh, let me know. But like I said, it's going to be in that Facebook group, so go check it out. Any questions, happy to help. And uh, we'll talk to you guys in the next video.